Happy American Thanksgiving to all my friends. It's a crazy time right now because a lot of sales are happening and a lot more leading up to the holidays, especially for everyone around the world, which means stores like Best Buy, Amazon, and B&H Photo are gonna start discounting their Intel MacBook Airs, and you're gonna be tempted to buy it. But I'm making this video as a public service announcement to say don't. I'm gonna give you five reasons why you should get the M1 MacBook Air, even if it costs more, than deciding to buy the Intel version of it. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. PDF Expert makes reading more natural and comfortable, allowing you to annotate PDFs, fill out forms, sign documents, and extract pages. It's more affordable than Adobe's Acrobat Pro DC and has a seven day free trial period. Click on the link in the description down below and try PDF Expert today. Reason number one is the display. They're both 13 inches. They share the same color gamut and accuracy, but they defer when it comes to screen brightness. Intel MacBook Air only gets up to 350 nits compared to 400 on the M1 MacBook Air. Now this is not a big deal if you mostly work inside, but if you go outdoors, let's say you're working in the backyard or on campus at school, the extra 50 nits the new M1 provides makes a big difference on seeing your screen. The other area is the top function row on both of these laptops. Apple changed it around a bit. The old MacBook Air had two keys to change the keyboard brightness and a launch pad key. Apple got rid of those keys and introduced three different keys instead. So now you have a do not disturb key, a voice dictation key, and a spotlight search key. If you wanna change the keyboard brightness on your brand new M1 MacBook Air, you have to do it through the control panel. Reason number two is definitely the battery life like MacBook Air, Intel, barely five hours of use before needing to charge. MacBook Air M1, eight hours of pounding this thing, and then I finally need to charge it. If you're doing more general productivity, it goes even longer. But the crazy thing is the idle time. You know, when I close this down and I open it up two days later, it only lost a couple of percentage points. MacBook Air Intel, it drains the battery significantly more. It's just an advantage of a low power chip, very similar to your smartphone. Number three is definitely the performance, like night and day between these two. MacBook Air Intel, only good enough to browse the net, answer emails, participate in Zoom calls. As soon as you leave that little circle and do anything demanding, it can't handle it. It's just not powerful enough. M1 MacBook Air is a breakthrough. It just dominates. Like something I never think would be possible in such a low power chip. It's just destroying everything in single core clock speeds. Now AMD does provide faster multi-core clock speeds, but the fact that this is even coming close to more power-hungry CPUs is incredible. And I finally did a Mozilla compile test. I had to load up Terminal using Rosetta, so an x86 format, but I was able to do it. And it almost came on par with the MacBook Pro 16. Now, some of you buying this might not ever edit video, but some of you might have to edit the odd video for class or school or for some sort of project. That wasn't really possible on the previous MacBook Air, but on this one, it's insane. Final Cut has been so well optimized that you could literally scrub through 4K and 8K footage like it's nothing. The render times are unbelievable, matching the MacBook Pro 16. Like think about that, the MacBook Pro 16 with a more powerful or more power hungry CPU and a dedicated GPU. And I've seen videos of the beta version of Resolve acting the same way, just plowing through 8K footage and doing tracking like it's no one's business. Now, if you're an Adobe Premiere Pro user like myself, it works, you can scrub through the footage, not as smooth as Final Cut, but if you render out the file, it's still gonna take some time because it's doing this through Rosetta. The point I'm trying to make is even though you're mostly gonna be using this MacBook Air to browse the web and answer emails, if you ever have to step outside of that and, and partake in one of these edge cases, whether it's coding or a three month course and editing video, the fact that this MacBook Air M1 can handle it is impressive. Number four is thermals. And this is not like the most important one, but it's still something I wanna mention. This MacBook Air, when it's under load, it can top up to 98 to 99 degrees Celsius. That's hot, you know? I'm not seeing a lot of these CPUs stop working or anything like that, but the problem is when you get that hot and that high, it starts to throttle. When it starts to throttle, the performance is reduced and it ruins the user experience. M1 MacBook Air, total opposite. It gets hot, it sometimes throttles because it's fanless, but it doesn't hit those temperatures, you know? 
I don't think I've ever seen this get over 75 degrees Celsius. And number five, longevity. The MacBook Air 2020 or 2019 to me is a computer that's just not gonna be great a year or two down the road. You're just gonna be so frustrated if you ever try to push it. You add in the fan noise and the thermals and the lack of performance, you're gonna wanna upgrade a lot sooner. M1 MacBook Air, I feel like this is a computer that's gonna last you at least three years. Plus there's other advantages like being able to, to use iPad and iOS apps right on your computer. Look, the big lesson, the PSA of this video is don't fall into the trap of getting a MacBook Air Intel, no matter how good the price is. I'd rather you wait a little bit longer, save up more and buy the M1 MacBook Air instead. I honestly hope this video helped provide some insight if you're deciding between these two MacBook Airs. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.